everyone, welcome to the video brought to you by TurboCamaro.ca. Today I'm going to be doing a review on this Retrosound Model 2B uh, stereo. It's in a 67 Camaro. If you look back, you'd see that I did an unboxing video for the stereo as well as an actual install video. I've never really shown the sort of the final look of the stereo since the install video, and then I haven't actually talked about the performance of the stereo either. So uh, I'm not much of an overall, you know, autophile or anything like that, but I do find that uh, I do enjoy the stereo and that I think it's worthy of a review because there are reviews out there, but not, I don't know, not specific to how I would like to see a review done. So as you can see here, uh, this is it installed, of course. It's uh, in the 67 Camaro dash. Uh, it's not a fully stock dash, but it does um, you know, look pretty stock in here. The only thing about it that's not stock, I would say, is the fact that it's so clean and new looking that it kind of... Uh, you know, take some of the luster out of the rest of the uh, the rest of the car, just with how shiny it is and whatnot. But uh, I'm sure that'll change over time. Uh, either way, uh, looking at the uh, actual stereo here, you can see since the install, I've added a screen protector that came with the setup, and it has uh, three different ones to choose from as it is. And I decided to go with. Um, if you look at the selection here, I went with the top one reason for that is is that other than maybe the middle one it offers the least obstruction to the screen once the screen is on and working um, now that's I think it's great I think it looks great I, it adds sort of a sort of a custom look to it it makes it almost look like it could be an old style radio or something like that however uh, if you're using the stereo for the display constantly it is a you just can't see this display properly. I mean, you can look through it and ignore the the white lettering, but unfortunately, it is an issue. So, uh, either way, um, once you actually get the stereo on, you'll be able to see here that the uh, you see the words are obstructed by the white lettering. It, it's possible to read through it, probably a little bit more in person than you know than with the camera actually on here. But what I'm going to do for the actual video here is I'm just going to peel it off. So that, that is the intro music for TurboCamaro.ca and the YouTube channel, but uh, it is uh, on the stereo right now. So I've got it through Bluetooth audio. Uh, not only does it say Bluetooth audio, but uh, there's a B representing audio. There's It's on the Rock uh, DSP or equalizer. And then you can see in the top corner, there's a subwoofer icon indicating that the subwoofer is on. This stereo uh, as a whole is the uh, oval speakers in the front, and they're 5x3s, and there's the 6x9s in the back, and then I have the two 10-inch subs in a uh, uh, non-ported box, so an unported box. And uh, overall, sounds great. You know, it's nothing crazy, but it is uh, enough for this type of car, uh, you know, probably more than the average 67 Camaro would have just because I do enjoy, you know, the, the bass and whatnot. So, and this stereo does a great job. I think um, performance wise, it's RMS is 25 by 4, and I think uh, peak 48 by 4, something like that, anyway. Yeah, so, it's pretty typical. Uh, Maybe RMS, a little less power than what's advertised for other stereos, but you'd never know it. Uh, the stereo sounds great and has plenty of power. So, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about that if that's something that you've seen and because they advertise it, uh, you know, as 25 by four and it's like, wow, you know, the average deck is, you know, 45, 48, 50 by four. Why would I buy one that's 25? Well, that's just realistic for what it actually is. So uh, either way, I want to go through some of the options that are with it and we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, these buttons here are generally for radio station selection. Uh, they do function as push buttons, so you can do those. I'm not on radio mode, so you're not going to see it, but that's how it's going to work. And then these, um, you know, allow you to choose the different, uh, some of the more basic options. So I'm just going to sort of cycle through here. And we'll just let it time out. I'll mute the radio in case it comes back on. And pushing the button here. So that's the chosen uh, DSP setting. So I'll off right there, classic rock pop I like the rock one sounds great bass plus three normal mid-range I have a minus one treble plus four balance left and right you know these are pretty common settings a little bit bigger more in the front because of the bigger speakers cross bass I've got it off the sub is on uh, sub volume is at 10 uh, sub uh, hertz settings so you can adjust your hertz for your amp uh, bass again hertz uh, mid-range adjustment treble adjustment these are like more advanced settings uh, and back to rock, so I'm just going to go through here. I think that was it. 
Uh, I do have an adjustment uh, from the amp directly for sub volume, but if you wanted to, you could use the deck too, which is kind of nice. So uh, going over here, once this time's out, hold this down. So I'm gonna adjust these settings here. This is whether you're at local or distance, so it can help with uh, some radio stations that are either weak or strong signal, which is nice. Uh, clock adjustment, which I'm probably still way out of sync here. Uh, there's, yeah, so the frequency, um, we can do, let's do the frequency, it's fine. Uh, beep, whether you want an annoying beep on every time you make an adjustment, I, uh, I don't like it. It drives me nuts. Uh, scanning for the most popular radio stations, you can have it autofill for you. Dimmer, low or high, I prefer low, it's already a fairly bright display. Bluetooth, the feature is on. Uh, Bluetooth connect or disconnect to various devices, that's fine. Uh, this is a um, radio station programming thing. This is an automatic frequency, so if your station drops off, it'll pick up the next strongest one in the area sort of thing. Good for if you're cruising in the USA or something like that. Traffic announcement mode. Uh, clock sync basically allows you to adjust it so that it picks up the radio station's clock if that feature's on there. Uh, where you're actually located, so it can, you know, I guess help tune the frequencies based off of the, the common area. Uh, I'm in Canada, but USA is good enough for me. Uh, and uh, volume adjustment, uh, whether or not it's the last or whether it's it's basically, um, you know, goes to a default volume every time you start it. I prefer the last. And, um, and that's pretty much it, whether or not you want to do a manual or auto-seek when you do your thing, and, and, and that's that. So um, I want to get to... Where did that go? Scan. So scan is the color choices. Uh, right now I've got it on just like the demo mode, the auto rotate. But uh, if you want to match your dash or something like that, then you can go through and pick one of the presets. Or this is one of my favorite things about this deck. Go to user mode, and I literally can adjust the red, uh, red, green, blue, red, red, yellow, blue. Let's see, red, green, blue. So like essentially, by doing the red, green, and blue, you're actually going to get the entire color spectrum. I think I can't remember what the manual says, but it's you know 256,000 color choices, the combinations or whatever. So it's it's a ridiculous number of choices. So white was fine. I, I have red lights now on the dash. All the gauges are red, so I'd probably go red too. But that, that's fine for now. So other than that, I mean that's that's the owner's manual version. I mean there is other functions of these. These, um, these uh, what I don't even want to call them here, these auto-rotate slider things. I need to make a slight adjustment to the stems on these to get them, that one, it auto-rotate, it flips back now. Because of the way this dash is configured, it has the tendency to push out on the knobs, which causes them to tighten, which means they don't flip back. See, they're working good now. See, now I'm adjusting all kinds of things here. Just by using this, you can switch modes, whether you're on aux or radio or uh, what USB or whatever it might be. So yeah, the um, these auto rotate back, and they have obviously this is skip back and previous track. So anyway, that's the whole stereo as far as how it functions. Now, installation, as you saw in the video, I'm just I'm gonna rip through that. But the bottom line is is that it is relatively complicated. It's not a simple you know cutting a hole, inserting a shroud, and sliding in and click click boom boom, you're done. It's going to be a matter of simple hand tools, you know, maybe drilling some holes to get everything lined up just right, and then you're going to have to monkey around with like you're seeing here with the uh, the different the stems for the knobs in order to get them the correct distance, and it may involve some trial and error, um, and that's fine, it, you know, for what it is, it's a great setup. This universal uh, Infinity Bracket system allows you to probably install this thing in any vehicle with any dash configuration. If you've got a dash to work with, you can probably get it installed regardless of the angles and things like that. So that's fantastic, but you are stuck with the idea that it is um, not necessarily uh, the e as easy as uh, a typical deck would be. So if you're okay with that, then that's fantastic. I'd say, you know, it's probably on a difficulty scale, it's probably like a, you know, a five out of 10. It's not hard, it's time consuming because of all the uh, included bits and pieces. As far as sound quality goes, I think it's fantastic. I mean, who are you to, you know, basically care what I think about how it sounds. I think it sounds great. I wouldn't say that there's anything wrong with the sound quality. If anything, it makes my old JVC deck sound like a piece of crap. And my uh, old JVC deck I thought was pretty good at the time. And then I got this and thought, wow, like the clarity, the volume, the crispness, it's, it's not even fair to compare. Then again, this has adjustments for, you know, the, the actual frequency and the mid-tones and things like that. And my old deck just didn't come with that stuff. So I can tune it a bit better to how I like the sound. But again, I'm not, you know, I'm not listening to classical music. There's a lot of, 
you know rock and, and pop and stuff like that so a little oldies too so uh, either way if um if, so if audio is important to you the quality then that's that's there i think um you know there's probably decks that are better but this is good uh the other thing that's saying is really good about this deck it has multiple uh amp outputs it has the ability to take on a, a dish changer if you wanted to it also you can see them down here kind of messy but i've got uh, two usb ins these can be used for ipods uh, it is uh, actually factory ipod compatible so that's great our iphone even compatible and then it has these two usbs you can plug in a usb stick or you could plug in your android phone and it will play right off your phone or or whatever you can actually just charge your phone with them if you really wanted to so if you don't have a usb port in your car like these old cars you uh, are going to be you know pretty stoked to have two so that's it. Um, I don't think there's much else that's important to cover in the video. There's lots of other little features that are probably great and wonderful to add. But for me, with my experience and my use of the deck, this is it. I generally use Bluetooth all the time. I, I don't get into radio very often. Uh, honestly, radio stations here are limited and uh, just not just not the greatest music. So a USB stick option's good too, if you don't cycle your music very often on your on your device. Otherwise, it's a great stereo. It looks fantastic. Uh, there's no way uh, it could look better than it does, I don't think. Uh, once I get this adjusted just right for these, and you know, there they go, working great. Um, it'll, that's it, it, it's fine. So yeah, if you have any questions about the deck or the review or just uh, life in general, feel free to contact me on turbocamaro.ca as well as uh, turbocamaro67 on uh, Facebook and Twitter. And then of course the uh, YouTube comment section below is uh, an awesome alternative. So thank you very much for watching.